Nobody could have foreseen that this success would turn out as a disaster as Houthi rebels seize Al Anad Air Base, thought to be the largest military base in the country. U.S. troops stationed there since 2012, using it as an intelligence post for hunting Al Qaeda. The U.S. also believed to have lost about $500 million provided to Yemen in military aid since 2007. Officials acknowledge they have lost track of more than a million rounds of ammunition, 160 Humvees, 200 M4 rifles and 250 suits of body armor along with other items. For some perspective on this, I'm joined by Islamic scholar Dr. John Andrew Morrow. Thank you for joining us here on RT International. So the U.S. has been putting cash and weapons into Yemen. Now, though, it's evacuating personnel because of the unrest there. What does this tell us about the effectiveness of the strategy? Well, what we're witnessing is a direct result of foreign policy. Now, either the Americans are completely and totally out of control or they're actually in control. It all depends on what the end game is and what the objective is. Now, six months ago, President Obama heralded the anti-terror campaign in Yemen as a template for other counter-terror efforts. But uh, doesn't the outcome in places like Yemen, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya suggest that it doesn't fully understand these countries? Well, clearly, they do not understand these countries. If we look at the history of Western imperialism, if we take the example of the British and the French, how is it possible for these people to rule over Muslims for centuries? Well, before they actually invaded these countries, if we take the, the, the case of Napoleon, for example, uh, the French studied them. They learned the languages. They learned the, the religion. They learned the culture. When Napoleon invaded Egypt, he brought hundreds of leading scholars with him. So they understood the people. They understood how they could their strengths and also their weaknesses. And as a result, they were able to control them for uh, such a long period of time. But when you throw yourself into a country that you do not understand, that you do not comprehend, it is reckless, it is irresponsible, and it is criminal. Uh, what lessons do you think can be learned from uh, the countries like Yemen in terms of a military experience? Well, I would say just say no. Just say no to foreign intervention. Just say no to imperialism. There are reports Saudi Arabia is moving heavy artillery and weaponry to its border with Yemen. Uh, what do you think about that development? Well, it seems to me that the Saudis are eager to get their hands or their claws on the oil that is found uh, in northern, northern Yemen. So it's not so much, uh, you know, that they're concerned about their security. There are uh, economic factors in play here. Do you so, really uh, think I, that, I'm, I'm sorry to jump in, but do you really think, no, I mean, absolutely. surely no, doesn't I, I Saudi, that, Saudi Arabia no. have enough oil at this point? I mean, uh, they're sitting on quite a bit of it. They don't seem to mind if the price drops. I mean, why do you well, think they're after I mean, Yemen's oil? You know, the, uh, when it comes to these people, the more money, the better, the more oil, the better. I mean, you know, they tell us they have oil and it'll last them for decades. In reality, do they really have, you know, how long do they have? Do they have 20 years? I mean, the more they have, the better. So uh, if they could annex the, uh, northern Yemen and uh, acquire those old oil fields, it would definitely be uh, of benefit to them. John Andrew Morrow, thank you for your time.